said, well, listen, um, this is the first time I've ever done it, like three in a row, and I don't give a damn because I'm in the mood. So I've talked a little bit about my job or, or the lack of at this stage because he called me while I was on the bus and decided to let me go. I tried to ask him why. He said, we got a couple complaints, and I suppose you guys understand exactly what he's talking about because I'm a little too honest and a little too candid and a little too crazy. So as good as I think I am, I'm not as good as all that. Maybe I'm meant to do something else. I wonder what it could be. <laughs> Ballerina. <laughs> really? I'll fucking do it. Y'all pay for it. And I will do a ballerina act as good as any 50-year-old long hair that he could ever do a ballerina act. It is my proposition right now, right here. Toasty, do you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> he loves me and he got the first whiskey today. Alright, so I talked about the job. Let's say la vie, that shit, okay? Let's just figure something else out. Move on. I'm going to drive a job. I got my license. Let's do something else, okay? But I try. Maybe go to school. Something. Anything. Move. Fucking do something. I'm going to have to do something different because this place is expensive and I can't afford to live here if I don't do something else. And I got to get out of this. I got to get some fucking foundation. If you know what I'm saying? I got a lot of shit. Just put it somewhere now. You know what I mean? Get a house. Everybody, you know. <laughs> you a good salesman, motherfucker. Give me a house, then. Give me a house. <laughs> All right, so I'm done selling. Unless you want to buy some shit. What if there's a, well, whatever. I ain't even talking about ideas. All right, but. <clears throat> so the other thing was Steve, man. Toasty would have liked Steve, and Steve would have liked Toasty. I can tell you a quick anecdote about Steve Reed, real quick. Let's just tell you this, because he said it doesn't matter. Um, Steve parked in his spot every day at his house, every day. And nobody ever parked in Steve's spot because everybody knew that was Steve's spot. Been there forever. Well, over there. Spot. <laughs> Steve, not an easy person to get along with, but being kind enough, rides around in the little apartment duplex complex thing and he sees a girl and he says, Excuse me, you don't know whose car that is, do you? And she says, I don't know whose fucking car that is. <laughs> now, with Steve, you can choose to be a bitch or you can choose to be nice. Now, excuse the expletive. I don't think I can say it. Maybe I can. Maybe I can. It can't. There you go. Let's use that one. He says, whatever. You don't have to be such a can't about it. <laughs> well, next thing you know, um, she calls the police on Steve Reed, <laughs> which is not, not something that he, I would recommend anybody to do. So the police come, and he's standing there, and he's holding her identification and Steve's identification, like so. And Steve's standing next to him, and he's saying her social security number out loud. 528-136881. And he keeps doing it. And then she says, would you please tell him to stop? Memorizing my social security number? <laughs> he says, Sorry, too late. <laughs> Already got it. <laughs> With that, right? That's bad enough. Because that's intimidation. It's bullying and all the bad side of this. Now, I don't even want to tell you the rest of this story, but I'm going to anyway because Steve Reed would probably not mind me sharing this with you actually. He'd be kind of proud of it. Well, he stalks this girl for like a week and a half. Because he called the police on it. He sees that she does her laundry every Wednesday between
between 2 and 4 o'clock. I love Steve, man, and as bad as it is, there's something funny about it. Uh, he just carried a bottle of bleach with him in on when he did, too. Not a nice thing to do. Take it easy.